Welcome to all my replay viewers. Please know that you can share some love by tapping on the screen and giving me some hearts if you like what I'm saying, if you like what I'm talking about. You can also share this with your followers on Facebook, Twitter, and wherever else they'll let you share it. I want to welcome you all today. Hello, Kim, I see you there. And if you're catching this on YouTube, please know that you can give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Hello, everyone. This is Marjorie Phoenix. How are you guys doing today? I am the author of the book, Who the Hell Do You Think You Are? Good morning. The book is about my life as an upper class, upper middle class stay-at-home mom that went from there to being homeless and penniless in 24 hours. And I share my story as I fought for my life and I fought for my child back and the discovery that I had been, um, that I was a domestic abuse victim. I'm also the founder of the Forgotten Women's Project. It's a organization that helps women who've gone through abuse and trauma reclaim their life through retreats. And I am a speaker and a publisher. And today I want to share something with you because I just wrapped up the last phase of the Phoenix process this week on Monday. It was absolutely amazing. A small group of women, we all got together and we went through the steps that I went through as I was coming out of my crisis and as I was rediscovering myself again. So it's really a self-discovery process uh, to help these women reclaim their life, rise from the ashes, as I put it. And um, one of the, the key things at the very end was asking the question, where do we go from here? Where do we go? And you've ever been at that place in your life sometimes where you feel like you've reached a fork in the road or you know you're you're on this journey and things are just really foggy it's just not clear and uncertain and you're spending a lot of time in prayer uh, and you're trying to figure out what to do and um, you just don't know you're confused um, so there's three things that I talked about in this process of trying to figure out where you're going to go from here and as I use that story of the phoenix rising from the ashes, I, you know, I tell the women that, you know, once that phoenix came out of the fire and out of the ashes, I'm thinking that bird did not fly back in the same direction it just came from. It took flight in a new direction. It had a purpose for its life right now. And among all the other things that we had learned about letting go of a lot of the the lies we've been telling ourselves, finding the truth of who we are, rediscovering ourselves. As you do that, you will start to see, you will start to get a sense of direction. You'll start to understand a little bit better about where you should be moving. A lot of the shedding process, you will start to notice that um, the same people that you were once spending time with, you're not going to spend time around them. The words coming out of your mouth are going to be so different than it used to be. The way you carry yourself, you should see a real change in who you are as a person if you're doing the steps that I had taught them. So let's think about this. This is a, this is a transition. This is a transition period, and we go through many transition periods in our lives. And some of them take longer for some of us. But here are just three things that I want you to really be focused on is your destination now. Where are you going from here? You know that you want your life to be better. You want to increase the quality of your life. You know you want your life to have meaning. So when you think back at what you have just released in that story, how can you use that to go out and make your life better? Is it going to be that you're going to maybe go out and start talking to women 
about your experience and how you were able to overcome it and help these women? Are you going to go out and volunteer your time and your services to help other people? Are you going to start speaking more on what you know? What is it that you feel resonating inside of you? Because I always say God uses these situations and he wants to use it for good. So you have to be open and willing to be able to take that guidance from God to move forward in all of that. So be focused on that in, in your destination, in your mission, in your purpose. What is that going to be? And then be committed. Now, even though you might have that stirring up, that inkling of a feeling, this sense of where you should be going, there's usually a little bit of an uncertainty because a lot of times, most times, God doesn't tell us the full plan. We have to trust. We have to have faith in that. But you have to be committed to the process. You have to be committed to the journey. I, I would go as far as to tell you, be committed enough to yourself to dig in and stay with it and not give up. And this is the biggest thing that I notice with recovery is that people don't stay committed. They give up when they feel like it's too hard, when they feel like it's, it's, it's painful because no one wants to feel the pain. And we're looking for a quick um, you know, self gratification in these things, and it's not going to happen. There is a process to this, and in all of this, it is a learning process. And in the learning and the growing, it is going to be hard and it is going to be painful. So, commit to yourself, commit to that process of what that is. The other part of it is the structures. Now, I use a lot, and I tell people, the rituals that you can create in your life. I call them rituals. You can call them habits, whatever they are. But in a time when your life doesn't feel balanced, at a time when things feel that they're off balance, they're a little bit chaotic, that is the time when you need to pull structure in. And I, I, I tell you time and time again, you want to start with in the morning time before you get your day started, to be able to spend that time with God. You want to be able to devote that time to yourself. So you want to add some structure into your life. You want to be in a constant mode of checking yourself and self-examination through that. That is the thing that is going to keep you on point and keep you on task as you're going through this. Because every day in this journey of self-discovery, it's going to be something new. It's going to be something else you're going to have to face. And so I want you to be strong enough to be able to, to meet it head on and to be able to know, you know what? I was able to get through this last thing. I can do this. I can do this because you've now got the tools to do it. And you know who you are. You know what you're made of. You know who you belong to and that you're safe and that you're supported in that journey. So keep the structures there, stay committed to the process and stay focused on the destination. There is no way you're going to, I, I don't want to use the word lose in life, but there's, you're going to be all right. You're going to be all right. And don't be afraid of feeling the pain sometime. Don't be afraid of having to do the hard stuff. Okay, this is all a part of the process. I know this for myself, I'm telling you. So I'm telling you what I know and what I have done. And for any of you that have read my book and know my story, you know that it was, it was just horrific. And I had to rebuild my life with nothing but God. So... These sorts of tools will be helpful for you as you're going through any, you know, your transition may not be like it was for me. I'm actually going through another transition in my life and it's all right, but I feel, I feel prepared for it. So it's about being prepared for life. 
You know, there's, there's nothing wrong with that. Just be prepared and be ready as things come, bam, you're ready. Okay. So all of this is to let you know as well <clears throat> that in January, I'm going to be opening up the Phoenix process again. And I'm so excited about this because I see what it has done for these women. So in January, another small group of women, if you want to hear more about that, you can go to my website at MarjoriePhoenix.com and click on the Phoenix process to get more information. And, um, or you can inbox me on Twitter or Facebook. That would be fine. Also in January, we're going to be starting again, the body and beauty detox. I'm really excited about that. I tell you, I'm doing it now. I'm going to be done um, next week. And I feel amazing. I have so much energy. My skin is glowing. I'm, you know, and I'm in the midst of studies. I'm getting ready to wind my semester up. And this has been so good for me. I want you guys to join me for that. I'm telling you, as we're going into the new year, I want you guys to be focused. I want you committed. You know, I want you to gain some structure. And the body and beauty um, detox, along with the Phoenix process, we now, you're, you're, we're getting the mind, body, and spirit in alignment with everything for 2016. So it's all going to be on point. <clears throat> and also to remind you, <clears throat> excuse me, the 30 and 30 is still going on until uh, November the 30th to um, raise funds for the Forgotten Women's Project. So anyone that purchases a book, the proceeds will go to the project to help in a scholarship for a woman to attend one of my retreats. So lots of good things going on. And I am so happy to be able to be with you guys again today. I have a, a schedule now of Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays. And all I can tell you about time is it will be between 11 and 1 <laughs> Eastern time. <laughs> That's the best that I can do with time right now. But I am, I am committed to you all to be here the three days a week to share with you and to encourage you in any way that I can. So until we meet again... Go out and change the world. Thank you for joining. Bye-bye.